So this article is called Were Companion Apps Ever Actually a Good Idea? From Friction Talk, written by Dan Waterman. Game development goes through some very strange trends, especially with hardware. Motion controls were the future, then VR, now cloud gaming. It seems like one idea dominates the industry's innovation for years at a time. A while ago, that was the second screen experience. The idea was to have a main screen where you can play the game and a second screen to provide supplementary information while you play. This usually came in the form of a companion app that players could download on their phone. The problem was, none of these were actually enhanced the experience in any meaningful way. Most of the time, these apps simply provided a way to view the world map on your phone rather than your TV, like Assassin's Creed. The problem is that looking at a map on your phone won't pause the game, unlike the in-game map. Another feature was the ability to change your equipment and loadouts like the Fallout 4 Pip-Boy app. While it was cool to use, especially if you put your phone in the Pip-Boy that came with the Collector's Edition, good luck trying to use a stim pack while being shot by super mutants. Although some of the better apps actually provided a mobile game to play. The Battlefront app gave you a cool card game to play, which also helped unlock items in the main game. One of the coolest ones was the CTOS app for Watch Dogs, where you could play as a police trying to stop another player as they race through the streets in the main game. But no matter how fun the little mini game was, it was never actually impacted the experience of the main game. Because they knew that not everybody would download the app. The main game needed to stand on its own. So none of these games were designed to integrate with an app in any significant way. It seems like the apps were simply added in the end to follow the trend because they were cheap to develop. It's strange to see what gimmicks the industry grasps onto, especially when there's no real innovation to be made. I think the companion apps were pretty bland back in the day and I'm not sad to see them gone. So that was Dan writing over in Friction Talk there. Now personally, I was sad to see them go and not because I used them, but because there was potential there. Now, Dan goes on to speak in that article, and there'll be a link to the full article below, uh, how it really came around in the success of the Nintendo era, uh, the Nintendo DS having its dual screen option, and uh, later on the Wii U as well. So yeah, uh, the whole thing was very much a trend chasing exercise. Now with that said, everyone has phones, <laughs> or if you don't, to quote uh, that guy from Blizzard, don't you have phones? But I lament the the passing fad of them because I think there was untapped potential there. Now, kind of what Dan was getting on about in that article there, I think the utilisation, if it was to ever come back over, was to ever succeed back in the day, it needed to provide an experience where, although you weren't playing the full game, it did contribute in some significant way. So the CTOS app that Dan wrote about just there was a perfect example. It was essentially a multiplayer portion for the game. So I could be playing Watch Dogs there, and my fiance could be sitting on her phone sending the police to attack me. That in itself was an impactful way, not that it impacted the story or the progression of the game, but it was an actual interaction with the game itself. Now, <laughs> like Dan said, most of them were basically just the uh, second screen maps, basically, that replaced the need of a pause menu. But if you want to check something like that in a game, you need to pause the game. Your attention is diverted elsewhere. Now, another example I can think of that was quite controversial was the Destiny app. Now, when Destiny initially launched back in 20... 2014, I want to say, when the first game uh, launched anyway, at the, near the, the earlier days of the last generation. A lot of the storyline was hidden in that app. The, the game didn't explain a lot of the narrative to you. If you wanted to know about the different factions in the game, you had to go into the app and read the, the codex, I believe it was called. Now that was detrimental, that actually took away from the game itself. It's like the polar opposite of what a companion app should or could have been. Now, I don't think we'll see a resurgence of companion apps necessarily. I think in the age of cloud gaming, I think that's going to fill a void where, you know, 
that the mobile phone market needs to to fill, basically. But if I did want to see it come back, I would want to see something like this. In Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, I think it was, there was a game mode in there where you could send, you, you basically formed your own little uh, enclave, I'm not sure what the in-game term for it was, where you would send out uh, assassins on missions and they would be gone in real time. So if you sent them on the mission, uh, there would be a time on it, say, three hours. And then three hours time, you, you check the game and it was either be a success or a fail. If they succeeded, they brought back resources to build your, your brotherhood out. And if it failed, it failed. <laughs> Sometimes they would die, I think. But wouldn't it be cool if there was an app which let you do that outside of the game without having to launch your actual console to dispatch your, your assassins while you're at work or while you're out to dinner. Not that it's uh, socially acceptable to be on your phone during dinner. But those kind of things where it lets you control something from the game but outside the game I think is where companion apps should have thrived more. Uh, not just that, but if you've got any games that require farming, here's a perfect example, although it wasn't necessarily a, a companion app, is when Pokemon had a little peripheral that was like a Pokeball. You transferred your Pokemon into your little Pokeball, and as you walked around at the pedometer, and the more steps you took, it earned experience as you walked around. So again, that's that idea of bringing something out of the game and actually having an impact, because when you put the Pokemon back into your game, it leveled up. Here's another example I can think of. Um, before Fable 2 came out on the Xbox 360, about a month or two before it came out, uh, they released something called Pub Games, where you could play some of the in-game mini-games uh, prior to launch. Now this came out on the Xbox, it wasn't an app. But if that was released as an app beforehand, where you could basically earn in-game coin through through well, uh, in-game gambling, I guess. <laughs> Not that it's got anything to do with microtransactions or anything like that. Again, that would be a really cool way to boost your in-game income without having to, to go around, you know, killing monsters or whatever it was you actually done in Fable 2. I really want to replay that game, actually. <laughs> I said that out loud. But I, I really think a companion app would be... A good idea to revisit in the future. Again, I don't know. I, I doubt Microsoft has any favour to to go ahead and do that because again, if if they want you to play a mobile, they want you playing full games. But something that adds to the experience rather than uh, substitutes, like in the case of world maps or in Destiny's keeps completely takes away from the experience.